Hey everyone, welcome in. I'm Jess. It's Wednesday. I hope you all are having a fantastic day wherever you are, uh, working, lurking, or just lurking, or just working. So uh, yeah, hello to Haley and Tan. Tan says, the new free escape simulator DLC room based on Among Us is out now. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Tan, why did you tell me this? <laughs> I just downloaded the watermelon game yesterday, two days ago. I don't know. And now you're telling me about this game? Oh man. My holidays are set, y'all. They're totally set now. <laughs> oh, jeez. How's everyone doing today? Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> Data is here and ready to go. Uh, yes, it is definitely a time stealer. Um. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> I have absolutely no idea what's going on. Gus is here. He has no idea what's going on. Uh, the blurbs are working on my end. I'm able to hear them. Um, a huge delay. Interesting. They shouldn't be. They shouldn't be on a delay at all. Um, I mean, I was able to hear them. So anyway, we'll just roll with it. Twitch's going to be twitchy. That's what happens. Uh, so today, friends, I thought it would be kind of cool to teach you a few 18-card uh, games. Uh, one is a little bit of a um, point scoring game on card placement. And that is the Skulls of Sedlec. And then Aqua is a game that's going to be coming out to campaign crowdfunding next year at the beginning of next year. And it's more about uh, point scoring based on the orientation of the cards. So, yeah, so I thought it would be kind of cool to show you both of these. I'm going to be playing the solo version of Skulls of Sedlec with the Monstrance uh, solo variant. And then for Aqua, it is a two-player only game. And so I will be showing you how the two-player mechanics work. Um, both of these games are fairly quick, so I'll probably be playing a couple games of each so you all can see how everything is. Um, oh, Gen Cam, hi, my dear, good to see you. Uh, yes, totally understand. Work lurk, I hope, um, school, or school work lurk. <laughs> I hope school work is, uh, not super difficult, uh, so you can kind of breeze through it. And I hope you and the kiddo are doing fantastic. Missed seeing you at PAX U. I don't know if you were there or not. Um, but yeah, it is, it's so nice to see you. Oh, it's finals week. Ooh, okay. Today I am trying a new tea from Tangy Poo. It is a Bloom and Brew Pure Tea. P-U-E-R-H tea. It's a bright roast tea. It's got uh, pure tea, organic chicory root, carob pods, hibiscus flower, coffee extract, roasted dandelion root, grapefruit peel, and chicory extract. So it's a new flavor for me. Um, aw, thanks, Jen. Uh, so I'm enjoying it so far, and uh, it'll kind of keep me, keep me cruising here on the stream. So let's get down to the table, friends, so I can show you how to play this game. So this game is from Button Shy. It is an 18, they're called their wallet game series. And so the games usually have 18 cards. And then in these nice little wallets here, you can hold uh, expansions and things like that. So this is the Monstrance expansion. There's, there's uh, six cards here that we're gonna be using for the uh, solo variant. And then for the base game, we've got the rules, and then we've got our 18 cards here. 
Now, the flavor text is super cool, so I'm gonna have to see, I have to read it to you so you all know uh, what is going on in this game. <laughs> it's the finals week now. Do -do 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 -do. <laughs> yeah, Jen's like, thanks, Tan. Thanks. <laughs> Okay, so the Sedlik Ossuary, 16th century AD. The Black Plague and the Hussite Wars have overcrowded the graveyard. Help the bone collector, a half-blind monk, by exhuming graves and arranging the skulls inside the crypt. Okay, so you're going to be playing. You're going to be playing all through the uh, the stack of cards, and you're going to be creating a pyramid a pyramid of a certain number of cards. And for this game, we're going to be, uh, for the solo, you're going to be building a pyramid, which they call the stack. And then you're going to have a feature from the Skulls of Sedlec Monstrance uh, deck that will show you what it looks like. So just for example, you'll have a nine card feature, something like this, okay? So what's gonna happen is in the regular base game, you would shuffle these and make them into piles. You will have four piles and you can uh, dig, which is revealing two cards and taking one card into your hand. Um, there is the action of, let me make sure I get the, the terminology correct. There is a, um, collecting, which is choosing one of the face up cards from one of the stacks and placing it into your hand. And then there's stacking where you take a card from your hand and place it in front of you to create your stack. Um, so there are placement rules, as you will see here, these cards are a little different in that they're, they're divided in halves. So each half is considered a row on your stack or on your pyramid. However, when you're stacking cards, they must be in an orientation so that when you stack them, they will be in between two separate cards like this. So you will have to make sure your base foundation is sturdy before you can stack anything on top, okay? So that's pretty much how, how it goes. And you will score points based on the orientation of each of the skulls that are featured uh, and the orientation to where they are in your stack or in your pyramid, okay? I will describe what those are now, and then I'll tell you what the variant is that we're gonna be playing with the uh, solo mode here, okay? So first we have the royals, which are these purple dudes. They say they will get one point for every royal or peasant below them. So they wanna have peasants and royals below them. So something like this would be a valid placement. So they would score one point for the peasant and then one point for the royal below it, okay? Uh, morning, found a copy of this buried in my game room over the weekend, need to learn it. Oh, nice. Well, I'm gonna be playing the solo variant today so you can kind of get an idea of how it's played. Um, so yeah, welcome in, good morning to you. All right, so the Royals, that's how they're gonna score. Peasants uh, want to be displayed, but don't mind where they are placed, and they just score one point no matter where they are in your stack. So you could have something like this over here, and then we'll stack something up here, and we will have uh, points for each peasant, so one, two, three. Okay, and you'll get the sum value of all of your points as you're scoring, okay? So that's the peasants. And they each have, each of the features actually write, has text at the bottom of the skull themselves to show you what the scoring is. So it's pretty straightforward. Once you've played it at least once, you'll understand like this is how it's scored. Uh, the priests, the priests want to be said, uh, spread out so what's going to happen is per level, the priest will score. So in this example, it will score once here. And then let's say the priest was actually up here. So it will score uh, two points for being on this level, which is just this the top half of this card, and then 
two points for being on this level, okay, for the bottom half of that card. So if there are priests next to each other, let's say something like this, and they were considered on the same row, you only get to choose, you only get to score uh, for each unique uh, level that the uh, priests are on. So these would not score separately. They would just score two for just this row. All right, so that's the priests. And then finally, we have the, rom oh, two more things. We have the romantics which are wanting to be next to each other. That's these red, the red areas here. They want to be next to each other. Uh, each, each car, each romantic will only score once. And if they are next to another romantic, they will score three points. So in this example, they will score six. So this would score three for being next to this one. And then this would also score three for being next to this one, okay? This romantic will not score anything because it's not adjacent to any other romantic. So that's the romantics. And then finally, we have the criminals. The criminals want to be next to priests because they're looking for redemption in the afterlife. So they will go, they will score two points if they are adjacent to a priest. Now, adjacency can be in one of two ways. So, and for example, the adjacency here on the bottom. So this criminal would score two points because it's adjacent to a priest, as well as this criminal will score two points for being adjacent to a priest. This criminal will also score two points because it is adjacent to the priest in that this level is touching. So adjacency in this way is also counting for point scoring. All right, so that's how the basic score is, and you would play out all 18 cards for however many players there are. I'm building up your pyramids and scoring points accordingly. Now, for the monstrance variant, what's gonna happen here is you're going to choose one of these, one of these uh, features, and it's going to be random, so I'm just gonna shuffle up and ask you all in the chat to choose a number one through six. If someone can choose a number for me, I would appreciate that. And that will help me decide what feature I'm going for today. Three, all right, so one, two, three. So this is my feature for today. I'm gonna make the archway. And then I will shuffle again on this side. And I will choose one, two, three over here, and this will be my bonus scoring. Okay, so what's gonna happen is, this is my feature that I'm going to be building, which is the archway. And then this is my bonus scoring just for that feature, okay? So it's called Tough Love. Romantics only score in the feature. So meaning, when I'm building, Today, I will have my feature on this side, and then I'll have my stack, which is the base game pyramid that I'll be building, okay? This has a set number of nine cards that I'm gonna be building with, and then nine cards are going to be only over here. So, I don't want any romantic scoring over here, I just want the romantics to score over here based on this, um, so that's a requirement for the feature, all right? And I have to build it in this way. Now you will see there are shaded cards. That means those two have to be played first before any of these other cards can be played, okay? And you will see that the, the way the skulls are set, so how they line up, that's how they will be scored, all right? Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to shuffle the, the base deck and I'm gonna create four piles. Hey, Cosmic Ben, welcome in. I'm gonna create four draw piles. They say in a two by two grid, so I'm gonna try my best to do this in a two by two grid. And instead of putting them into my hand, what's gonna happen is when I take the dig action or the collect action, I'm actually going to be placing them into either my stack or my feature. Uh, 
All right, so we have four here, and the stack is going to be, the stack is going to be a set of four, three, and two. So I'm gonna move this up here actually, and have those available, and then you could see my four stacks over here, all right? Now, at the beginning of the game, they tell you to, I'll slide these up just a tad so you can see them better. They tell you to reveal the top two to begin with, right? Do, 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 do. Flip two cards from the graveyard. So this is considered the graveyard in my draw piles. Um, and then place one following the placement rules to begin the feature, okay? So there we are. Uh, Spitzka's here. Quick question. Should I and Eva play Nucleum or Scholars of the South Tigris in Ar Arborea? Arborea. Well, I have not played any of those games, Spitzka, so I can't, I can't give any input. However, I did see Book of Nerds play Scholars of the South Tigris on stream, and he seemed to enjoy it very much. So... I'm going to vote for that one. <clears throat> so whatever one that goes with there. All right. Okay. So I got to reveal two. Oh, jeeps. All right. Well, that's a terrible start. So I have to do this for my feature. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I'm choosing one to start with, and I'm just going to place it down here just because where else am I going to place it? Uh, and that'll be the beginning of my feature. And so now I could take a bone, I could take my regular turn, which is digging, which is revealing the top two cards uh, from a face down deck, uh, one from each deck, sorry, two decks face up, one at each deck and take one of those cards to place either in my stack or in my feature. Uh, collecting, which is taking something that's already face up and placing it, or um, I think that was it. I think it's just those two actions. Yeah, because there's no, um, you don't put any cards into your hand. All right, so <laughs> I think I'm just gonna do this and go over here just to start off just to start off with my feature, because I know these just score regardless. Um, and so, then, so I wanna get priests up here. So priests would be great to go up here. Okay, so now I have to dig. So I'm gonna reveal some cards here. Ooh, okay. Um. Okay. Da, 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 da. Hmm. Hi, Deadpan. Welcome in. I mean, the priest is great because it needs to be adjacent. And I have to keep my romantics over here if I can. Uh, dang, okay, well, well, darn it. All right, well, I'll do this. And now I can collect and place this for my next turn. Or I can reveal two more cards. Ugh. I feel like I need to reveal two more cards. Okay, so I'm gonna reveal, I'm gonna go here and here. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, the criminal is gonna score, so it, the only way it scores is if it's next to a priest, so I gotta do that. Okay. Mm-mm-mm. Darn, okay, and then it's got to, and then it's these halves 
that are going to start making the archway. Ugh. These are terrible cards. These are terrible cards. So I think what I have to do is I'm going to take this here for my next turn and I'll place it here. Yeah. And then... Boop, 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 boop. Okay. Okay, let's do this and this. Oh, okay. I'll start building my stack. So here's my stack. I'll move it down here so I can see it. Uh, yeah, we're going to need more space. Okay. Mm. Royals. Huh. Yeah, I'm gonna flip. I'm gonna flip over cards. Okay, 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 okay. So then. Hmm. If only, if only the priest. Oh, sheesh. Okay, well, I can't do that. Hey, Uranus. Welcome in. So I'm going to slide these. I'm going to slide these over. I know you can barely see them, but if I'm going to make this archway, it's going to be a little precarious here. Okay, how am I going to do that now? Oh, I guess I'll do the royal. The royal will be here. Yeah. What's up, Gameritis? I'm playing it after this one, Tate. See, see in the chat, it's going after this one. Doing this one first. No, I'm not playing Aqua right now. I'm playing it after this one. Because it says learn and play Skulls of Sedlik, hyper, uh, semicolon, Aqua. That means Aqua is going to be after this one. Okay. Um... <laughs> I got I gotta start doing something on here, which is not great. So I'm flipping these two over. Peasants, 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 peasants. Okay. Well, at least I'll do this. This is separate. This is separate from. I put it. Oh, maybe I'll put it up here so y'all can see it better. There. Okay. This is my stack or my. This is my pyramid. This is my stack. Okay. And then. I gotta do things. Uh. 
Oh, did I play that? Oh, I might have played that wrong. Because I drew, I drew these two first. So I have to take from one of these. My bad, everybody. Okay, so I'm going to do this. Then that's going to go here. My archway. Bloop, 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 bloop. Okay, now I can do this one. It's gonna go over here. And then I can do Peasants will score wherever. Hmm. Hi, Wim. Welcome in. All right, so I'm gonna do this. This is my archway. I'm realizing, so let's do this for my stack. <laughs> my stack's gonna go over here because my archway is like super, I should have chosen a different one. I didn't realize how far spread this one was going to go. Okay, so there's my archway. Here's my, my regular stack down here. Now I'm gonna flip two over. Ah, I realized, uh, shoot. That one's gonna score, that one's not gonna score. I'm gonna put this down over here. Then I'll do this here. <laughs> oh, good, Deadpan. I'm glad you got a copy too. All right, then I'll do this here. Ah, shoot. Okay, so hmm, I think I'll just put the royals here. All right, so the royals are going here. All right, so I have my archway now. Do 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 do. All right. <laughs> right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. This is the widest. This is the widest that this is gone. <laughs> oh gosh. I should have redrawn. I should have redrawn. That's okay. I'll I'll make sure to do this next time. Okay, so this is my archway. This is like ginormous I didn't realize how ginormous this thing would be oh okay slide 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 over here slide 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 over here all right you can kind of see it here I'll zoom out a little bit okay there we go a little bit better now I have this as my stack this is my stack here. Not enough table. <laughs> well, in the multiplayer game, you're only doing like a four, three, two kind of pyramid thing, right? Um, so yeah, all right. So then I'm gonna do this here for my double priesties and then that one. 
It doesn't matter. This one's going to go here. And then this is going to go here. And then this is going to go here. Okay. Well, that wasn't too terrible. That wasn't too terrible. Okay. I'm realizing this is all kind of, this is all kind of crooked. So let's do this. Y'all didn't know this was part of the game where you have to replace all of your cards. There we go. All right, here we go. And we're doing this. We're doing this. Okay. We'll move this up so y'all can see it better. So I've got my feature, which is the archway, the beautiful archway here. And then I've got my stack down here. So I will score my feature first so you can see how how it scored and then we'll like we'll take all these cards out and you can see it better okay um so it says romantics only score in the feature so the romantics won't score any here which is fine cuz i purposely messed that up okay so the feature so let's get a pen let's get a pen and write this down everybody Let's write this down so I get my score. Seeing what is my score. Do, 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 do. Okay, so first, the first way to score would probably be the peasants. Okay. Or we'll do the royals. Oh, it says royals first before peasants. Okay, so we'll do royals first. So we'll score the royals here. So we've got one point per royal or peasant below. So for this royal, we have one, two, three, four. So this is for this royal, that's four. And then for this royal, we have, there's that one's not below it. So it has to be below it. So one, two so that's two then for this row we also have two there okay and we're going to add up the score from your feature as well from the stack okay so i'm just going to score the feature right now and then i'll add it to my stack later so not to confuse anybody all right peasants one each so one two three, four on the peasants. Then we have the priests, which are two per level that they're on. So this is on a level here, so that's two. Oh, these are on the same level, darn it. So that's just four on the priests. Then we have the romantics, which are only scored here on the feature. So these are the only pairings. So three for this one and three for this one for six total. And then we have got the criminals who want to be next to priests. So this score is zero, zero. This has two because it's adjacent. This has two for that's four and then two more here for six. All right, so that's my feature. So I did the archway for the feature. So let's remove those so we can make some more space for our stack. And then when we play this again, we'll do better. We'll probably choose a, a feature that's less table poggy. Sorry, my puppies heard somebody at the door. Hi, slivers. 
and Wim welcome in and Tate and Deadpan and anyone else that's just hanging out. Okay, so again, we're gonna do our royals. So anyone that has a peasant below it, so that's just one for the royals here. Then we've got our peasants, one per, so one, two, three, four on our peasants. Then we've got our priests, our priests for each level that they're on, so this is one level, so two. These are together, so it's a separate level, so four and six. Six levels for the priests. And then the romantics are not scoring because of our special bonus according to the feature. So we're not scoring romantics. And then the criminals wanna be next to priests. So this one is adjacent, so that's two. This one's adjacent here for four. This one's adjacent here for six. All right, so we gotta add all these together and see what it shows for the solo mode. All right, so we've got four, six, eight, nine. Nine and eight is 17, 21, 27, 33, 33 and 12 is 45. Oh God, that's terrible. I'm not even on the scoring track. <laughs> okay, so let's try that again. So we're gonna do this. <laughs> Thanks, Daniel. All right, so we're gonna try this again. Let's see, let's do the coat of arms and All right, so we're gonna do the coat of arms and the missionary. So again, the coat of arms. Oh, I didn't show you what the what it said for the um, for the archway. There's a cool little flavor text. It said, in 1870, a famous wood carver, Frontskeet Rint, was hired to organize the ossuary's bones into ornate works of art. So this is actually like a little fun fact. A little fun fact there. Okay. So we've got our coat of arms now. So this is our feature that we're going to build. And it says, the family crest of the house of Schwarzenberg, intricately recreated in bone, depicts a crown pecking out the eye of a soldier. Oh gosh, that's a little intense. So then our special bonus scoring is missionaries. Any priest that is on a level without a peasant does not score. Scoring priest gives you an additional plus one. Okay, so we need priests next to uh, peasants. All right, and then this only applies to our feature. So again, we still have our basic uh, stack, our pyramid stack that we need. Um, other than that, it's all basically the same scoring. So we're gonna do this one again and see if we can get a little bit better, a little bit better on our score here. But the Skulls of Sedlec has a lot of different expansions in it. Uh, you can play um, solo with it, but you can also play up to four players at there's certain expansions that allow you to add up to four players um, but I think the base game does two to three I think yeah two to three but stay tuned friends we're gonna do this one more time and then we're gonna switch over to aqua and hopefully Tate will be here in the chat hanging out if we have any questions shout out to Tate because he's gonna be sponsoring these aqua streams for me, so thank you Tate for doing that. And if you are interested friends uh, to learn more, Aqua is coming to crowdfunding next month. And there's information on how you can sign up and things like that and then you'll get an idea of how this is played in just a little bit. So again, we gotta start 
Let's start opposites here. Thanks, Tan, for the lurky lurk. All right, so we're gonna do these up here. So I have to start, remember the shaded area is where you have to start first. So since I know priests need to score next to peasants, I don't wanna put this peasant at the bottom. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this for my feature. I'm gonna put this down here. Okay, all right. Then we'll go here and here. Oh, okay. I will choose this for my stack first. I'll do the stack first. Then priests. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> uh, then I'll do, oh, the priest wants to be, okay, so maybe I can get some peasants next to it too. So I'll do the priest over here. Yeah, yeah, I'll show, I'll show it. Um, Gus actually helped name a few of the paintings, helped, and so that's pretty cool. He got a little, um, credit on the rules, which was very, very nice that happened. Um, okay, so we're do, let's do this and this. So they want to be next to peasants. So, oh, that needs to be there. Okay. Ah, this is not great. So I'm going to do this because I need, I need a peasant to be on this section. Ugh, that's, that's terrible. Okay. Oh no. Oh no. Okay. So I'll do here. Yeah. No, 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 no. I'll do this here. Oh, who shuffled these cards? <laughs> uh, okay. Mm. Darn, 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 darny, darn, darn. Okay, uh, shoot. Why did all the priests come out? Joe. <laughs> That's right, Gameritis. Dang it, Joe. Mm. Dang it, dang it, dang it. Okay, well, I guess I'll do this here. Okay, um... We'll flip. And a royal. Dad Nabbit. Mmm. Oh, well, that's okay. Because that needs, this needs to go here. That's good. Okay, so I'll do this. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Royals, okay, Royals want to score. They have peasants below them, so that's fine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hey, Starbuck. All right, so we do, we'll do this there. Now I gotta flip more cards. Boom, boom. Ah, why, why? Uh, 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 well, I guess I'll put the priest there. I guess I'll put the priest there. Yeah, okay. Oh no, I, ha I can't do that. I have to do one of these first. Ah, uh, darn. Oh man, this is hard. This is difficult, y'all. This is difficult. <sighs> Shoot. Okay, I'll do this. I don't like doing that. I don't like doing it, but I will. And then I'll do this so I could score at least for my romantics getting paired up. Sheesh. Okay. It's so easy, just win. <laughs> now I'm going to do this here. Mm. Okay, we're going to do some flippity gibbetses. Okay, um, I could do that. Yeah, that's gonna go there. That's one, two, three, one, two, three. And these are gonna go one, two, three. Okay. Oh, shoot, but they're not going to score, though. Oh, yeah, they will, once per level. My criminals aren't going to score, at least over here. Mm, that's tough. Okay. Okay, so that's, we're definitely going to do... Yeah, we're definitely gonna do this. And we're gonna do the, no, yes, yes, this. Okay, so that's my feature. My feature is done. Or no, sorry, my stack is done. Okay, so we're gonna do this over here. All right, my stack is done. I gotta do these now. Mmm, Dagnabbit, Dagnabbit. Oh, so it's maximum if I get that. Oh, sheesh, man. That's tough. That's tough. I think it's Kofi, Starbuck. <laughs> no, I don't know. I honestly don't know. That's just gonna go here. And then we're gonna do this. Okay, okay. I don't know. <laughs> oh, I'm just messing with you. I don't know, Starbuck. 
Okay, so we're going to score. So it says the priest that is on any level without a peasant does not score. So we'll have to remember that. But first we'll do the royals. We're do the royal. We're going to score our feature again. And then, oh, I'll slide these over because y'all can't see it. And we're going to slide these over. Okay. There we go. All right. So first we're going to score our royals. Royals get one point for every royal or peasant below it. So this one will score one, two, three. Three for that. Then the peasants just are one point per, so one, two, three for the peasants there. Then we have our priest scoring. So it says any priest that is on a level without a peasant does not score. So this priest is on a level with a peasant, so it does score. So it's just two here. And then this does have one, so that's four. And then this one does, so that's six. Remember, these ones don't because it's only one per level, one priest per level. I made the mistake of like doubling them up, but six, six there. And then we have the romantics paired. So I have three here and three here for six, three and three is 12. That was pretty good. And then our criminals adjacent to priests. I only have one here. Oh, good grief. So that's two. Can I get good grief in the chat, please? <laughs> ah, all right. So that's my feature. Yeah, so I have the royals. They only got that royal. Peasants, priests, two, four, six. Romantics, I have 12. And then the criminals, I have two. Ugh. Thank you, Deadpan. <laughs> oh, good All right, again, with the royal. So this royal will have for every peasant and royal below it. So one, two, three, four, five, six. That's awesome. This royal has one, two, three, four, five, six. This royal has one, two, three, four. Peasants are one per, so one, two, three, four, five. The priests, priests are just gonna score basic here. Oh no, that applies, I think that applies to everything, right? Do, 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 do. Feature cards. to show the extra scoring effect. So yeah, so that has to be, oh, so none of these priests, oh, this priest will score because it is, is on the same level as a peasant. Okay, so just two for that priest. Oh, great. I totally whiffed on that one. All right, romantics, I do have that. So that's six. Criminals, next two priests. So two, four, six. There, okay, I am slightly better, maybe, maybe better, we'll see. So 10, 16, 19, 22, 27, 29, 35, 47, 53, 55, 61. Oh, I think I barely squeaked it out here. 60 points or more as a humble monk. The next one would have been a 65. If I got 75 or more, that would have been a legendary artisan. So that's the Skulls of Sedlik with the Monstrance variant. Like I said, there are so many others. I'll go back up to the top here as I do a little cleanup. So many other variants, uh, extra cards that you can play with. Um, But it's only, you know, it's only an 18 card deck, which is 
crazy. Um, but it's really, it's really cool that it just, it just works in that way. So now we're moving on from the macabre to some beautiful artwork that was done by Tate himself. Like how cool is that, friends? Tate has done the watercolors on this. And uh, yeah, so this is Aqua. So Skulls of Sedlek is not solo only. You can play, the base game plays two to three players on Skulls of Sedlek. Um, and Aqua, which I'm gonna show right now, is uh, two player only. Whoop, let me do a little movement. Stream, stream magic, you didn't even know. <laughs> Uh, there we go. All right. JoJo showed us this game a while back. Which one? Aqua? Yeah, I just got this uh, from Tate himself at PAX U. He was throwing them out like Halloween candy. No, just kidding. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, skulls. Yeah. Okay, so. Dino Corgi, hi, hi, hi. Welcome in, my friend. Hope you're having a fantastic day. All right, so I'm gonna make sure I get all the setup right. <clears throat> Again, if you wanna know about the upcoming campaign, friends, there's the link in there. <gasps> you had a PB&J with ruffles on it? Oh my gosh. That brings me back. That literally brings me back, Dental Corgi, because I used to do that as a kid during lunchtime. Like, no joke. No joke. All right, so again, friends, these this is an 18 card game. It is quite the delicacy. <laughs> oh gosh, that's too funny. All right, so this is Aqua. I feel like I need to have like a, oh, okay. <laughs> so in this game, friends, I'm gonna read, I'm gonna read the fun flavor text because it's always fun on the flavor text here. You are curators seeking to create the best setup for the new water themed exhibit in your art museum. One of you believes very strongly in the power of vertical alignment, while the other argues that the focus should be on horizontal structure. 
You will each take turns placing the paintings in the exhibit. And once you have finished, you will earn presentation points for the horizontal or ver vertical groupings of the artwork. The curator with the most points wins. All right, so the objective is you will be placing cards in the museum, so we're all working collectively in the same area, and you will score based on your personal scoring objectives. So there is a column player and a row player, okay? So the column player is going to score points based on the columns that get created. So here's a little player reference here. C for the columns. Okay, you're going to score based on the columns. Now, there are four different features or suits in the game. There are waves, lily pads, boats, and turtles. All right, and there are numbers one through eight. However, this diagram shows what number of each of those is in the deck. So, for example, there is a wave card of a value of one, and a wave card values two, three, four, five, and six. And then there are lily pad cards of values two, three, four, five, six, and seven. The boat cards have values of three, five, and seven. And the turtles have values of four, six, and eight. Now, if you count all of these squares, that's 18 cards, okay? So that'll tell you, that's how many cards there are in the deck, all right? We got people chatting about sandwiches right now. Come on, man, I haven't even had lunch yet. So rude, so rude. <laughs> okay, so those are the four different features uh, that you will see in the game, as well as the numbers that are on them, okay? So let me show you what those look like. So you can kind of get an idea of how they will show out in the game. So we've got a wave, a turtle, a wave, a turtle, a lily pad, and let's get a boat out here, okay? So the cards are divided up in the, the iconography that you see here. You want a second player? Oh, you have time? Let's play. Okay, sweet. Gus or not, everybody. Jumping in. So, uh, I had dinner like hours ago. Well, what did you have, Wim? You gotta tell us. You can't, you can't just share that you had dinner without telling us what you ate. So, you could see the imagery here is the painting, the name of the painting, and then we've got a number value and then the, the suit or the, the feature that it is. So this is a wave one there, okay? We've got, wow, special guest in the <laughs> chat. So that is a wave. Then we've got our lily pad, same thing here. We've got the name, we've got the color, the, the, the picture here, the beautiful painting, the number, and then the suit. And then for our boats, you will see there's a boat there's a boat on these cards. So every card has some kind of um, a relation to what type of suit it is. So we've got waves, we've got lily pads, we've got boats, and then we've got the uh, turtle. The turtle here is the same. So the icon with the number and then the turtle there. You had Chinese food, nice. Mm, that sounds good. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, so that is for the column, that we have the column. And then the row player also has their own reference card with the same number where the cards are situated and things. And then just a reminder that you're going to be scoring for the rows. Now, on the flip side of these, you will be scoring based on the following criteria, okay? So for the waves, the lily pads, and the boats, they have- And numbers. And numbers, thank you. Waves, lily pads, boats, and numbers, you're going to score However, you need to have a threshold of at least 10 or 20 on the numbers before you can score them. Yeah, so the sum in the row if you're the row player or the sum in the columns if you're the column player yeah. has to be within that range. Yeah, okay. 
So we've got that. So then what's gonna happen is if you have a pair of wave cards in a row for the row, or if it's for the column, for the column player, you will score two points for a pair. Three, three of a kind is three points, four of a kind is five points, and five of a kind is eight points. Aw, oh, Tate, Tate gifting some subs. Nice. Thanks, Tate. Here come the subs. And these pairs, three of a kinds, four of a kinds, they do not have to be adjacent to each other. They just have to be in the same row or, or in, in the, the same, same column. column. So you could have them separated by two, three cards, but that's fine as long, you know, think about a poker hand. It's, yes. You may have them totally separated. Sure, 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 sure. But still score. Okay, so that, that applies, the scoring applies for the lily, for the lily pads, the boats, and the numbers as well. Because remember, there are some numbers that repeat in the deck, mm -hmm. okay? Hey, Giggles, welcome in. Hi, Giggles. Rice with beef sounds good, Wim. I think Wim said hi earlier. Hello, Wim. Uh, okay, so that's the scoring. And then we have special turtle scoring. Turtles want to be adjacent to waves, and this has to be adjacent. Yes. So if they are adjacent to a wave, so let's say like in this example, the turtle is adjacent to the wave. If there is adjacency on one side, then they get two points. If they have adjacency on both sides, they will get five points. So in this example, if there was a wave on either side like this, the row player would score five points. Or if it was like this, the column player would score five points. Yes, Giggles, this is Tate's game. All right. Then finally, we have the consecutive rows. We have consecutive rows here for the lily pads. If there are consecutive rows with lily pads in them, you will score the number of points based on how many consecutive rows. So consecutive rows mean there could be one here and then there could be a lily pad over here and then there could be a lily pad up here. So this row, there would be one row, two rows, three rows of lily pads. That means you would gain three points. Okay, now if you had four, you get four, five points, five, five points, things like that. If they are next to each other, you get an additional three points. Uh, no, I no? think that's just a scoring example. Tate, correct if that's wrong. Oh. I think that's just showing, hey, here's three rows that have lily pads, so that counts as three points. Oh, gotcha, okay. Yeah, clarify what this what this uh, means over here, Tate. The rules over here? Yeah. Hey, Sloth Journey. Welcome in. Welcome, welcome in, Sloth Journey. I am doing fine. Hope you are too. So, and then I will also talk about placement rules. So we will each have a hand of three cards. Now, I know, right? You have been busy though, Sloth. You have been busy. Just making sure these are all face the right direction here. Okay, so when we start the game, we will shuffle these up. We will deal out three cards for each player. Okay, are you okay to be the column player? Sounds good. All right, here I'll slide over so you can see. Okay. So you can see what's happening. I noticed my name was still on the frame from uh, Monday Oh, too. shoot. So I was like, I, hey, I might as well just jump down there. And oh, go, sorry. And go play. Professional streamer here, y'all. Professional streamer. At least I put the right game on the screen. <laughs> okay, so each of us is going to get dealt three cards. Now, when we draw the card first... It'll be face up to start the game. Now, whatever, oh. I'll just have it so you could read it. Now, if it is an even, then the even plate, there's a card, I believe you wanna check. I think it goes to the right. Yeah, I think that means that. The column player starts. It's uh here, start player. Place the top card in the middle of the table. If the painting is odd, place a card face down below it. 
the row player will start. If the column, if the card is even, which this is, place a face down card to the right. Okay. And the column player will start. So I will be start player because an even card came off. So okay. Jess gets a little like seed card in a row. Yeah. That's her benefit for going second. And we'll slide over here. And then what happens for placement rules is on a turn, you can place wherever you want. However, it must be adjacent to an already placed card. Mm -hmm. Now, when you place adjacent to an already placed card, you must do the opposite of what is revealed on the card. So if it is a face-up card and you place here, here, or here, it must be face down. If it is a face down card, here, here, or here, it must be face up. Yep. Now, when you surround, when you surround a face down card, with all face up cards, then you can flip this over face up, okay? And there is one more thing that we didn't add yet, uh, the boats. The boats. When we reveal a boat card, when a boat card gets played face up, we will send out some visitors. These are little visitors. I'm hoping they'll be little meeples or like, I don't know, Tate, a little something different. Because I don't imagine myself as a square. I just don't. <laughs> so. But how do other people imagine you? I don't know. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> when we place down, when we place down a um, a boat card, we will take two. And it's got to be face up. So if you place a boat card oh, face yeah, sorry, down, sorry. you're not revealing any info and you don't place visitors. Correct. When you place Thank one you. face up. So when a face-up boat card gets played or when it gets revealed. Nope, just when it's played. Um, you, will, you will place two cards on the boat, two cubes on the boat, and then the player that played that card will get to move this visitor up to three spaces somewhere along the pathway, and it must land on a card. Mm -hmm. Like you can't go one, two, three out into no man's land. Hoping for you have to good land here. here. What happens is at the end of the game, each visitor on either the row for the row player or the column for the column player will add an additional point uh, for final scoring. If that card scores. Okay. So if this card is a turtle and you're the row player and you've got a wave card here, then instead of just two points, you would get three points. Okay, cool. So, it so that's it. Whatever, that's the boat. If that card is scored. <laughs> Yeah, so you'll see it as we play it. Yeah. Oh, little paintbrush meeples. That would be cute, Tangie. And yes, Slivers, I'm always here to bring you laughter and joy. <laughs> All right, so me first. Let's do this. So I'm playing next to a face down card. Okay. Or face up card, I'm sorry. So I play face down. You don't get to see what that was. No. So it's cool. I like the hidden hidden information that could eventually become revealed. So Jess doesn't know how big of a number was that because a piece of this game is you're trying to get in that 10 to 20 range, which is very important so things yes. score. Yes, yes. But and you, you may want to bust other people's plans. Yeah, you can sabotage. Yeah. Listen, all of y'all, it's a sabotage. Like if you've got something real good going, I may be like, seven more points. Yeah, so I'm going to also do this. Okay. There and draw up. All right. Boop, 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 ba -doop, boop, ba -doop. And you got to try to remember what, what you played where. Yes. Um, let's do. Let's do this. So, Tangi, I'm I'm uh, drinking the Bright Roast Bloom and Brew Pure Tea. Pure Tea. Pure Tea. I don't know how to say that word. P-U-E-R-H. Pure Tea? Pure. 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 Yeah. You just got to. <laughs> just make noises with just your mouth. Turn your head away Pure. as you say, oh, I'm drinking the Pure Tea. And people are like, oh. Yeah, fancy. <laughs> okay. And folks, look at the art on these cards. It is unbelievable. All right, as you're to go, love, I played that seven over there. Ah, why? Why? Okay, sorry. I gotta do this. I gotta. I gotta do this. Can your body for me? Okay, I'm gonna do. What you doing? Bam! A boat. Oh, a boat, Mickey Vicky. I seen a boat. 
All right, visitors have arrived. We're, and you don't have to move them. Like if you think that this is the card you want to have score, you can leave your visitor on there. So no. you just got to move up two, three. Oh, okay. Feeling confident about that. Mm-hmm. Oh, and I got to draw. Yep. I'm going to move here. Yeah. And the visitors, I was looking at the rules. The visitors do not score uh, extra for the lily pad scoring. Okay. It's just for the top section with the pears oh. and the turtles. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so you Ooh, play. Ooh, orange tea. Nice. Yeah, I should have. I feel bad now, Tanji. I should have done a tea exchange. It was very kind of you. You gave me so much tea. David hogged the Earl Grey. He was like, Oh, as soon as I saw Earl Grey, I was like, Yes. This is mine. All right. How about some echoes? Ooh. I love these names, too. I, I should, you love these names. A, he he helped name a few. That's a of little them. self self serving, I guess. <laughs> I, I did get to help name them a little bit, um, but the vast majority is Tate's names, and it's just clever. Like the the waves crashing on a shore named Echoes. Oh, good grief! Yeah, yeah. Hey, what are you doing to my column? Don't you go messing with my column? And this is not, this is like, it doesn't have to be symmetrical like this, friends. We're just playing it like that. So sometimes it could just get all obscure and, you know, it's an art exhibit. So it could go any which way you want it to. I don't know who here has ever been to Portland. Portland has a wonderful art museum. Yes. So if you do yes. ever come and art museums are part of your thing, or even if they're not and you're kind of maybe interested... Go to the Portland Art Museum. It is fantastic. It is also one of the most confusing buildings to walk around. Yes. There's two separate buildings. They're connected by an underground like uh, exhibit passageway. Yeah, it's an exhibit. It's not even a hallway. There's, there's like half floors. It's like, I think I'm going to floor one and a half. Yeah. Um, being John Malkovich style. Like, yeah. It's confusing as heck, but it's a wonderful art museum. Um... Let's try, let's try this. But you didn't see this coming. Ba, 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 da, ba, ba. They do a lot of really cool exhibits. Um, we have Leica up here uh -huh. who did Coraline, Coraline Box Trolls, Box Trolls, Kubo and the Two Strings, Kubo and the Two Strings. Um, lots of those great stop motion animation studios. And then there's another stop motion animation studio here that did, mm -hmm. um, what's that director's name? Who did Pinocchio? Uh, Benicio del Toro. Uh, and they just did an exhibit of the whole group's stop motion animation. For Pinocchio. Was, for Pinocchio, which was amazing to walk through yeah. um let's see what's going on here so oh lily pad i finished playing face up cards around this face down so we are going to reveal and see what's up mm. all right last oh no two nope. more cards and then we play all our cards in our hand so it's not anything <sighs> Thank you, Sloth. Hydration. Hydrate. Got my Earl Grey. Not the one from Tangy, though, because you already drank that. I did already drink that one. But I got my eye on a chocolatey one. That sounds real nice. Darn, darn, darny, darn, darn. <gasps> yes, Sloth. Okay. Sorry, sorry. Little side note. I got to show everybody. So... Here's my skull. That <laughs> All the skulls of Sedlick. Yeah. Not quite, but. Uh, I actually painted this. So we have one of those like ceramic, um, ceramic places where you can like paint your own Color thing. Color me mine. Or yeah, that. yeah, yeah. So I painted this and funny story. Hey, I'm drinking my cup. 
Oh yeah, you are too. So David's, one that David's got a, a cute whale on it. It's a whale. And he'll the tail. Hold, yeah, hold. I'll hold it. I got it. Okay. The tail is it's the, an actual uh, tail. The handle is the tail. Yeah. So um, the whale is also painted. Yeah. So David painted that one, and I painted this one, and it was like my birthday or something. Uh huh. And uh, so we went to this place, and he was like, "Let's do the thing." So we this both probably did took mugs. Me about an hour. It took him about an hour. Mine probably took like four and a half or something. <laughs> David left, got pizza, ate his pizza, came back, and I was still painting. <laughs> and it was just like, leave me here. Leave me to my art. <laughs> but you did a wonderful job. So it was time very well spent. Yeah. This so I mug... also painted it white as well. So it wasn't, you know, the ceramic when you get it, it's usually like a grayish white color. So I actually painted it white and I painted the inside too. So. Yes. Tate, if you are still on, how long do these paintings take you to paint? Oh, yeah. That's a good question. I'm really curious. Like, because there's. There's 18 paintings right. in just this game. All of the artwork on all 18 cards is unique. How long, buddy? Yeah, how long did it take you, Tate? And how big are these uh, when you paint them? Like, And are any for sale? Ooh. Oh, that would be cool stretch goals. Send a little painting. Get a signed copy. Or not stretch goals. What are they like? Add-ons or whatever. Yeah, Get the five game. or six years. Oh my gosh, dang! So this game was like a okay, long wait. time All in the making. All eighteen were five in five. It doesn't take five or six years each. Oh, so in total, all 18 paintings took you five to six years. What we all didn't know is that Tate is 97 years old. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. A few hours. Some took eight or more. Okay, right, yeah. that makes sense. It's <laughs> just like. Of... Each painting took me <laughs> six years. All right, is it me? Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> that is a lot of painting, Sloth. You're right. That is a lot of painting. All right, let's do this. Face down next to the face up. So there's no more cards to draw, so we just play out what we got. Oh, cheaps. Now I'm trying to remember. <laughs> yes, that's the, that's the other great piece about these cards being face down Shoot. is what those early ones, and I even put a cube on it. Because I thought it was really important. I'm like, what was it? Shoot. <laughs> of course, we're talking and having a lot of fun while we play. Um, Shoot. Okay, well, I'll just do this. All right. So what is this one? Flibbit. Flibbity gibbets is... Holy a, lily pads. Oh, Emerald Vista. I have to put these like right side up so you can read it. Dang, your lily pad score... <laughs> Those are all unique rows for her to score. Okay. Uh, uh, Dominia. We saw The Lion King in the theater. Well, I did. We did. Did we do it? Did we get to it? I have never seen The Lion King. It's amazing. Uh, if you ever get to see that live baby sea show. Baby turtle. Aww. It's a little baby. It's a little baby turtle. Oh, shoot. Okay. Okay. I have to adjust camera a little bit. Oh, we can slide it up. Y'all were seeing me in the crazy banana pants that I was doing. Mm. Okay, hold on. We're going to do this. There we go. I think this is how real curators do their curating too. Yeah, they're like, let's just move it. Everybody just grab some paintings and slide them up. And just slide them. <laughs> they got those like moving slider things. All right, because I'm playing there. Last card. 16 by 20. Some are bigger, like 20 by 30. Okay. Right on. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um. Oh, crap. And are you doing oil or acrylic? Oh, yeah, that's a good question. Or are these watercolor? I no, I think these are. These yeah, are I'm doing that one. Oil or color. Okay, so now we reveal. Flip all the cards. Go so ahead. we only had one boat card get played. You never know, because if they get played upside down, then. 
Ooh, very turtly. Oh, all the turtles ended up in the same column. So let's do. It's a family here in this one. And me. You and me. Courage. Okay, so let's do columns first. So. Okay, so the total on this column is two. So that column does, does not score. The total on this column is 1622. Dang it. So does not score. That is over 20, so nothing there. All acrylic, says Taute. Uh, the total on this column is 6, 12, 15. All right, we got one. Okay. So, ooh, okay. So looking at symbols, we have two waves. So yep. that's a pair for two. Mm -hmm. And then we have three threes. So that is a three of a kind for three. Okay. For that column. Okay, so... Uh, and then this card has a visitor on it, and that scores. So that's part of my triplet set. So that triplet set is worth four instead of three. Because okay. there's a visitor checking out that one. Okay. All right, this one's 13, uh, 18, 22, bust, 6, 13, 19. All right, we got another one to score here. So we have a pair 18. of... Oh, 18, thank you. Uh -huh. We have a pair of waves for two points. Okay. And we have a pair of fives for two more points. Mm -hmm. No visitors there. And then this column over here is only two, so that does not score. Okay. Okay, and then we'll look for the turtles. Twiddles. Uh, So all three turtles are here in this column. This one is next to a wave, so this one... Oh, wait, but this column bust. Yeah, so nothing, because it's got to be between 18 or 10 and 20. Oh, so, so that one doesn't score you anything. Nothing. Nothing on your turtles. On my turtles. Okay. And then looking for consecutive lily pads. lily pads. And then this doesn't matter on the 10 to 20 score. That's just for the turtles yeah. and the other Yeah, that's kind. why it's separated here Yeah. on the score sheet. Um. So looking for lily pads in columns, none, none. Here's one. This one definitely has one. Two, three, four columns for five more points. Okay, so... Two, five, six, eight, ten, fifteen total for David. Okay, so I'm sitting fifteen for columns. All right, rows. So with our top row here, we got nine, sixteen, twenty-one, bust. bust. Here is nine, ten, twelve. All right, that scores. So that scores. So then we've got um a pair of lily pads. We got a pair of lily pads. That's for it for two. Yep. And this boat card didn't score, so that visitor doesn't help. Dang it. Okay. Uh, this is 10, 15, 22. Does Bust. not score. This is 10, 13, 17, 20. Bleh. Bust. And, and four. four. So nothing. Dang Two. it. <laughs> Two points. So far. Oh, All right. Turtles. Seriously? Okay. Okay. So this row busted. So nothing. Uh, this row doesn't have a turtle in it. This row busted. busted to nothing. This row busted. Busted to nothing. Okay. Ah. Consecutive lily pads. That stinks. When you build these grids like this, one, like, two, three, three for three points. Three for three. Hold on to your hats, everybody. I got five points. <laughs> yeah. 15 to 5. Dang, GG. Yeah, I think we really kind of hosed ourselves a bit. So in other games, you can build these out in any way you want. I mean, it could be like craziness. And that might actually be beneficial because if you get too much of that grid like we ended up having, you overload yeah. quickly. So All we, right, let's switch. We busted each other. Well, I got to go back to work, love. But thanks for the game. That is a wonderful game. When's the Kickstarter? Starts in January. Kickstarter is in January. Bye, everybody. So we will do one more game so you can kind of see how everything is. January 2nd is the ETA, says Tate. So I'm going to slide my chair over. I'm going to take this upon myself, channeling my inner David.
to see if, if I get a better score this time. Five. See, that's the hard thing is you have to think about um, when some of them are face down versus face up, you can not score sometimes. <laughs> so there we are. Okay, so here we go. Nice little shuffle. Okay, got a, I got a shuffle on stream so y'all can see, making sure that I'm not. Okay, then we'll cut the deck here. All right, three cards. One, two, three. One, two, three. Then we will flip this over. It is an even number. So again, the even, if it's an even number, place the card face down to the right and then the column player will start. Okay. All right, so this is the column player. So let's see what we got. Here's our card that we got here. So this is a value of two, and this is a mystery value. So I know I want turtles next to my waves here, and also sometimes having a pad. Lily pad would be great too. So I'm gonna do this here. And then we'll grab a new one. All right. Here is, oh, the row player has some big numbers here. Some big, big numbers. Okay. So that's a mystery. I know, so as the row player, I know I wanna have next to turtles. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play my turtle card over here. and then draw up new. Okay, now this is so interesting because I'm so used to holding cards this way, but in this game, you have to kind of hold them this way so you can see the numbers and the iconography there. All right, so I know, put something face down here. Ooh, but I have a turtle card here. So I think what I'm gonna do is, I'm also gonna put a turtle card up here, but they don't know it. Shh, they don't know it, it's a secret. All right. Now, uh, again, we've got really large numbers. We've got really, really, really large numbers. I think I wanna get this out of my hand. So hoping that'll be okay if I place that there. That's a lily pad there. Okay. Now we're going over here. So here we got, we've got some waves and we've got a boat. Let's put this here. Shouldn't be too terrible. We'll do that. Okay. Now, again, the row the row player seems to have like the big numbers here. The big big numbers here. Ooh, and knowing that they have a wave right here, I'm gonna play my big turtle right here. But they don't know it yet, it's a secret. Because it's gonna be next to a wave, so that's good. All right, then, 
Ooh, we have our boat. I don't want to put the boat here because that that's a, has a chance to bust. I don't know what this is. So that seems like an okay placement. And here is, I'm not sure either. So I'm gonna place the boat here and that's gonna be the visitors. So as the column player, I'm gonna move one, two, three. And then for the row player, they're going to I think they'll just leave it, they'll leave it. Okay. The row player, we got some lily pads and some waves. Now I'm remembering, don't remember what was here. Don't remember what was placed there. Oh, but I did put my turtle here. So, yeah. I'm gonna put it here. Yeah, I'm gonna put it there. Oops, this way. Okay. Column player, here we go for the columns. If I place it there, I know at least I'll score. No, this one, I'm gonna do this one. At least we'll score. Okay. And the row player. Um, We're gonna do that there. Okay, we're getting down to it. We've drawn all the cards now. Okay. So, oh, we have okay numbers. So let's do this here, okay? Now, because this is fully surrounded, this gets flipped over. All right, and now it's the row player. So again, we're, we're kind of hosed with these larger numbers. And I do want to make sure I get some points up here. So I'm going to play this here. Another boat. So the row player is going to play down here. One, two, three. The column player already has one here, so they're gonna move one. Yeah, they're gonna stay over there. Okay, now the column player only has a little bit, so it's not too terrible, they did that. Okay, so they're gonna play here, play it safe. Play it safe over here. And then the row player. Uh, again, I think the row player kind of got kind of got stuck. Mm 
Yeah, I'll do that. Okay, and then the column player is going to play their last card. That's six, seven, eight. Okay, they're going to play here. And then the row player. We'll play here. Oh, okay, so now we're going to reveal. Oh, we got a twiddle. We got a little baby twiddle here. Okay. All right, so first again, we'll start with the column player. All right, column player, we're gonna see this one does not meet the 10 to 20 threshold. This is one, seven, 11, 19, right? Eight, 12, 18, 19. Okay, so that does. Ooh, okay, so now we're going to do matching. We have pairs of waves. So we have a pair of waves for two. Um, a pair of turtles. Oh, turtles don't count for that. Uh, lily pads, no. Boats, no. Numbers, no. So that's just two for that column there and then we have this baby turtle oh we'll do turtles we'll do turtles separately so we're we'll only going to do the pairs and three of the four of kinds okay so that's just two here for that one then this column we have four six nine twelve fourteen five eight ten fourteen Okay, so that scores. We have two waves for two. We have two lily pads also for another two. And we have two threes for another two and two twos for another two. Wow, that column did really well. And then the visitors score, I think, one point on those. Okay, so any set. So for the turtles, it'll just score for the turtles next to lily pads. Okay, next to waves. So that'll just score that. Okay. So we'll come back to the turtles in just a sec. All right, so that's that. Then here we've got 10, 17, 23, that doesn't score. 13, 16, 20, that does score. Wow, exactly 20. Okay, so we don't have any waves. We have one, two, three lily pads for three points. Uh, any consecutive numbers, no consecutive numbers, no boats, no anything like that, okay. So now we're going back to the turtles. So this one does score uh, turtles. We have one turtle here next to this wave. So that is two points. Then we have this turtle next to this wave which is another two points. 
and then an additional one point for the visitor there. So this turtle has one wave for two more points. And then that is it, and no other turtles there. Okay, so adding together, two, four, six, eight, 10, 13, 14, 15, 16, 18, 20 for the column player. Yeah, because this one bonks, so these visitors don't count. Oh, and I didn't do the lily pads, my bad. Uh, so one column, this one, two columns, three columns. So three columns is three points. So they got 23 points. Okay. Pretty good for them. Now we're doing the row player. Solo mode's testing to set up three face down card diagonally with a face up card on the right. Players will score the column and just play for the best points. Hmm. That's cool, Tate. All right, so we're starting with this row. So with five, 10, 16, so that one will score. Uh, we don't have any pairs or any, <laughs> oh geez. Did I do that again? Dagnabbit, I did it again. Okay, so this row does score, but doesn't have any extra points there. Uh, okay, so this is six, eight, 13, 20. That's exactly 20. Uh, so we've got two waves for two and no other matching here. So that doesn't score. Uh, then we have seven, 14, 17. So that does score. Uh, we have two boats for two there and an additional point there and an additional point there. Oh yeah. So all those are just one point. Okay, and then here we've had 14, 17, bonk, and then that doesn't do anything. All right, so uh, then we've got turtles. So this turtle is what next to one wave for two points. And there you go, an additional point there. This turtle is next to one wave, so that is another two points with the visitor tile there. Uh, this turtle is next, oh, this turtle bonked, so this turtle does not score. Okay, then we've got our lily pads. So we have one, two, three, four, four lily pads. I think five, it would be five lily pads there because, um, Yeah, it's independent. So five lily pads for eight points there. Okay, cool. All right, so four, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 21. Oh, that's close. 21 to 23. That was a very close game. Very, very close game. Hey, Dutch, welcome in. Gus and Tate are talking strategy there. <laughs> so that, my friends, is Aqua. I'm going to be playing this uh, once a week for the next few weeks leading up to the Kickstarter. And even during the Kickstarter, I'll have some friends coming in to play with me. Probably have Gus play another time with me. But it's it's got a really pretty box here. And it's got the nice QR code that you can scan that has the rules and, you know, the Kickstarter page and all that kind of stuff. And the tokens here. Um, very compact. I didn't call it a wallet game because it's not in a wallet. But it is an 18 card game there. So, yeah. So that, friends, is uh, the stream for today. I hope you all had a wonderful time hanging out with me. Friday, I'm probably going to be playing something digital. I may or may not have a new obsession with a new game. It has fruit in it. <laughs> uh, 
I can't believe you all have brought me into the realm of uh, time consuming games. So, yeah. But uh, so we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, but let us see who is coming uh, online for streaming or who we can raid into. Let's see. Someone might be popping up at the top of the hour. Or if anyone has any suggestions in the chat, let me know. Um, let's see. Oh, Smolecule is celebrating her three-year affiliate anniversary. You know what? Let's send it over to Smolecule. She is such a joy. And always appreciate the support she gives to the community. And so, celebrating her three-year uh, affiliate anniversary is nothing to sneeze at, friends. Um, it says it's intended for mature audiences, so if you're work lurking, um, might need to keep it on a mute or a very low volume. Just counting my cards here, making sure I've got all of them. Yeah, so friends, this has been fun. Thank you to my surprise guest, David. Although I was kind of prepping him to come because I kept his name up on the stream. <laughs> so I think he was also kind of morally obligated to attend. Uh, but thank you for joining me. Uh, thanks everybody for joining me. And if I don't see you before Friday, stay safe, enjoy your board games, be kind to one another, and I'll catch you all next time. Bye, everybody.